Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I'm here for Rising of the Shield Hero episode 9. Last time on Shield Hero, we fought a dragon and saved a village. Okay, uh, this episode is titled Melty, and I made a mistake in the last video, which Jonathan, Fel Fel Jonathan Felisario was kind enough to point out. Melty, not equal multi. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, that changes everything. Um, given that the names are so similar, I'm going to assume that they're related and guess that maybe Melty is queen. Or not. I don't know. No clue. But thanks, Jonathan. That actually, that's really helpful because <laughs> I would have gone on uh, confusing the two. Um, no idea what's going to be going on in this episode, but there are a bunch of comments from the last episode that I want to talk about because... I don't know, it was an interesting one, and and a lot of people seem to be kind of divided on it, and I want to talk about that, so let's do it. The first one is from Mantis Prayer, who provides uh, a bit of backstory on how this episode's content was handled in the manga. I like better how this encounter went down in the manga. As soon as the dragon wakes up, Naofumi and Raftalia try to retreat, but Philo immediately jumps at the dragon. Naofumi yells at Philo to stop. She doesn't and is hurt by her slave crest. As she's falling, she gets eaten by the dragon, and you can see the shock and desperation on Naofumi's face. This lacked that impact, but I still enjoyed it. This is interesting. So, Philo did a stupid by attempting to fight the dragon because she hates dragons because she's a Philo. Uh, but in in this setup, Naofumi like has a bit more responsibility for causing her chompedness, right? She gets numbed because he's distracted her with the pain from the slave crest. And I guess they they sort of showed that with her just being distracted by his his shout. But uh, this is might be a little bit stronger. And so I'm kind of wondering why they didn't go with that and just keep it the same. No idea. Good comment. Thank you, Mantis Prayer. Second one is from Okamura Asako. Bit underwhelming all in all. The pacing is too slow for my enjoyment and nothing of real impact developed since episode four, but I'll keep watching since I never learned that I don't particularly enjoy Isekai. I'm sticking with slime even though I think it's mediocre at best and I'll stick with this. Ah, there's more in it. Let's finish it. Okay. Nice reaction video as ever. If it wasn't for you reactors, I would have dropped plenty of shows by now since the adaptations are in large, are in large pretty lackluster compared to the original novels or manga, to a point understandable, but still. Goblin Slayer was one of those where the adaptation sparked with episode one, where I could see a more mature audience-oriented show, or as someone would say, edgy, but then it turned out to be just your run-of-the-mill run teenager young adult show, which left me displeased. Okay. Uh, two kind of interesting things here, and this sparked a long comment chain, which I recommend you go and check out because there are some interesting perspectives in there, um, and Okamura explained a bit more later, but, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of episodes with no, like, big plot development, uh, it's been, I, I guess if we're going to be kind to it, it's been developing the characters themselves and their relationships, but there hasn't been anything seriously impactful going on unless some of the things that i think are filler are actually going to be more important later so this makes me wonder when's the next wave because we know that they've got this hourglass thing and they have some indication of when the next wave will come but we as the audience have no clue when it's coming it, it's just going around adventuring with the team until what until the wave hits until something crazy goes on and screws everything up? I don't know. I just don't know. So, I understand what you mean when you say that it's too slow for your enjoyment. It's not that the the pacing of the episodes individually is too slow. It's that the whole story has been drawn out and there's a lot of stuff that doesn't really matter. A lot of what we would call filler. Uh, regardless of whether it's like anime only or in the manga and just moved around or from the light novel and just moved around. It's still not directly contributing to the main thrust of the plot. Uh, so I get where you're coming from. I'm glad that, that you're sticking with shows because of reactors. That's kind of cool. Um, Goblin Slayer is a weird example because episode one is so different from the rest of the show in tone and quality and everything. Um, it's just so incredibly different.
I guess I don't have anything else to say about this. It's a good comment, and it sparked a lot of interesting discussion, so again, I would recommend checking out the full comment chain. Next, from Jin Liu. Sadly, I couldn't stand the almightiness that is the CGI dragon. Can't handle it. Uh, unless CGI is used either f for either the background and is integrated at the very least decently, the exception that is Hoseki no Kuni, and somehow Love Live, it doesn't bother me at all, even though I thought, it, I, thought I should be. I just prob probably can't stand CGI models under any other circumstances. That is a totally fine and fair perspective. Um, I made a video a little while ago. I, it was actually quite a while ago pretty early video for the channel on like just laying out my perspective on CG because I was getting some shit because I talked about the Zombieland Saga CG dance stuff. Um, a bunch of people were like, you just hate CG. No, I don't. I, I hate when it's poorly integrated. And I think that's what you're trying to get at. It's like there's, there are all CG shows that look pretty good like Hoseki. Um, and then there are times when CG backgrounds are really useful for being able to use dynamic camera and, and interesting stuff like that. But a lot of the time, CG, like a giant CG dragon plopped in the middle of your otherwise 2D show kind of looks whack. I get that. I kind of dug the CG dragon in the last episode. It was pretty cool. Um, it had a lot of work into it. And I didn't think it looked terrible. It was definitely obviously CG, but for some reason that didn't bother me too much. Just a matter of taste, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and yeah, okay, that was all of the comments that I wanted to spotlight. That was faster than I thought. Okay, cool. So let's get into episode nine, which I think is titled Melty. And let's figure out who Melty is and what's going to happen in this episode. I'm at zero seconds. There will be multiple versions of this video. You can find picture-in-picture -picture versions, links in the description, BitChute and Mega, and the timer-based version with full discussion on YouTube. So if you're watching along with your own media with the timer-based version, there will be a beep-beep timer. It'll go boop-boop-boop-beep, and on the beep in the green light, that's the same frame that the video starts playing on my screen. So if you're playing along, you probably want to hit the button about then. Beep-beep timer goes here. the heck are those? Weird slug frog things and weird bee beetle things? Yeah, she's cursed. Oh, right. We gotta go fix the curse thing. We gotta go to a uh, church or something with lots of holy water or something. Okay. Big time. What? Are those philos? You scared away all her philo friends. Is she human though? Or is she a philo queen king thing? This is tea, by the way.
that one. That's my guess for Melty. But then that girl is also in the OP. The one we just met. I think that was her. I love the execution of that scene. Melty. Okay. Or is she Melty? Younger sibling? Mm. Aren't? Ah. Okay, so she loves Philos. Okay. What if she's royalty? Okay, she's melty. Okie dokie then. Mystery solved. Are you Malty's little sister? What's spreading through this village? Cool. Where's Melty? Any useful information? Ah, so I brought her home with me. They're going there too. Yeah, what if what if he brings her back and and Malty is like you kidnapped my sister. I'm assuming that she's Malty's sister.
<laughs> ah, okay. The ninja mask people are uh, looking out for her. Oh, it's the same village. Oh, duh. See, like, that scene was CG, and that looked fine to me. Philo was CG, and the cart was CG. Got no problem with it. She just kicked the shit out of an elk or something? <laughs> Okay, traveling and goofing off montage. <laughs> okay. He's got a cool fuzzy cloak thing. He's fine. Thinking Philo Aider. <laughs> she will eat anything. But with the music, this is being placed as a played as a gag. Oh. Okay. A living down comforter, eh? <laughs> Okay, and scene. Okay, to the church we go. That's pretty pretty weird. Cuz nobody likes you. <laughs> whispers, whispers. Whisper, whisper. Uh-oh.
นะอ่าโอเคโอเคฮะฮะอินเทอร์เรสติ้งพิเอร์โอเคไนส What? Why? I think he just wants some help. Yeah, I think he just wants some help with something. Oh, or is he part of Spear Hero's party? Bruh. Melty. Oh, Philo. No. <laughs> she's his. She's his IRL waifu. <laughs> she's kicked you in the nuts before, dude. She'll do it again. <laughs> I hate that bird. Oh, he's he's wearing a cod piece now. Dude, dude, you're blowing up the town. The fuck. <laughs> Oh, we got a brawl. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? No, no, no! Fuck. Why though? <laughs> Why? Huh? Huh? Oh! 
people are bowing to her over Malty? Okay. Okay. Of course you are. She is her older sister. But she's closer with mother. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Become bird, kicking nuts. You're clueless. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand what you've done? Good. Good, good. Set up, pay off. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whoa, why? Why is she first in line? That's what I want to know. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. You could at least, you could at least hear her out. Information is information. But he's going to hate you because you're related to, to Malty. Okay. Okay.
in the midst of turmoil for the next episode. Okay, interesting. Interesting episode. Um, Kind of fillery, but also getting back to some of the, the, the main plot stuff. So we're headed back to the capital. We make it back to the capital. We meet Motiasu and, and Multi again. Before that, we meet Melty, and she is the younger sister, but she's first in line for the throne because it seems that whoever is actually in power, I'm guessing their mother, uh, is aware that mine Malty is out of her out of her noggin. She's she's nuts. So Melty is first in line, which explains why the soldiers like bowed to her over what mine said. Interesting. Feels like now Fumi is letting his hate of the royal family uh, get the better of him, because regardless of whether he can trust what Melty says, there's a potential that she is actually a well-meaning ally, uh, and having the first, or I guess second princess, but first in line to the throne on your side could be really good for them. Like, really good for them. So this seems like a stupid by now Fumi. Even if she is trying to wheedle them and trying to like be evil, which she's not, um, it would probably benefit him to hear her out to see what she's trying to propose. Uh, hmm. Interesting. So Melty is immediately likable. Because she's she's cute. She immediately gets along with Philo. She seems more interested in I don't know, just just curious and and happy about the world, which is interesting. It's very different from the other characters uh, in the royal family, at least. We get this montage of like eating food and being being happy together. And then this is all played as a gag with great Kevin Pankin music to let us know. I love the design of this church. It's like super crazy. And kind of almost nonsensical, but but I like it. So we got bow. I don't know. Is this sword or spear? We got three of the through the things, whatever. And then not the shield. And then what's the 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 big symbol on the stained glass window? Is that bow, spear, sword? Something like that? Maybe. It's definitely pulling from Christian symbolism. Especially with the, the Pope and the, the priests and the nuns and all that jazz. Um, I was kind of surprised that this Pope guy wasn't a total and utter jerk to to Naofumi. Interesting. And then the symbol on his chest is the same, but like a different incarnation. And it's definitely, that's definitely like bow, sword, spear, right? But then it's kind of got this circle thing, which could be a shield behind it. I don't know. I like the light in this scene. Coming through the stained glass. Looks pretty good. The the Pope stops the nun from doing that thing. From giving him inferior holy water. So they've got the holy water, but they weren't able to use it on Raftalia in this episode because they go running from this guy who I guess is part of Motiasu's unit. Motiasu attacks, fucks up by, by messing with Philo. They just randomly start a brawl. Interesting. Got a royal decree to make this an official duel, overridden by Melty. Then they go and... Chat. Yeah, good setup and payoff with the cod piece and her kicking through it. Didn't help too much. I'm first in the line. Did 
this might be perfect. Yeah, she's got she's got some some plan here that would probably benefit Naofumi, and he's like, nope, I hate you for reasons. See ya. Uh, okay, interesting. The ninja people are still watching from the shadows. I'm kind of wanting them to come more to the fore. And I really want to know what Melty's deal is. Like, what's her plan? What was she going to ask him? Hmm. Now that we're back in the capital, a lot of things can happen. We might even be building to the next wave. I wish there were some indicator of, of when that's coming. Too bad. I wonder where the queen is and what she's up to at this point. Hmm. Okay, interesting episode. Uh, seems like we're building to, to some new conflicts. With the introduction of a new character who happens to be the first in line above Malty. Okay, I like this episode. Overall, pretty pretty fun. I have to wonder what we're building to, though. I hope it'll be a good payoff. So, I guess I guess I'm gonna wrap it up. I've been Tiabu. This has been Rising the Shield Hero, episode nine. Episode nine. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.